ready to go, we'll we'll get started here. Um, Mary, is that okay with you? Ready. Works for me. I'm ready to go. Okay. Well, good evening, everybody. I know that it's a little bit late on, on uh, East Coast time. I'm coming in from Seattle, Washington. Uh, my name is Brian Finney. I am the president and founder of Democracy Live!, and it is a true honor tonight to spend some time with you here today to, to, to share with you um, this new voter enfranchisement and empowerment tool to allow all of you that wish to be able to vote privately and, and independently from home, the ability to access your ballot, be able to mark your ballot, and be able to really um, do all of that in the context of, of independence and privacy. We're extremely fortunate at Democracy Live to have a wonderful presenter here this evening. Um, it's Her name is Melissa Carney, and um, she'll present herself and, and her background, but what she'll be doing today is uh, walking the team here on the call through um, what we call the Omni Ballot Accessible Absentee Balloting Portal. Right, so that's kind of a mouthful, but really what it is, it, it's the ability for you all to log in to your ballot at home on whatever device or computer that you're comfortable with, be able to use whatever input or, or um, uh, screen reader uh, technology that you happen to use with the intent being that, you know, if you're at home and, and you can go to amazon.com and, and go shopping, or if you're able to go to Facebook and, and, and socialize, you should also be able to go to your ballot and access and mark your ballot independently and privately. That's the intent of, of Omni Ballot. Um, I will say at the end of the process that a, a printer is involved and is a requirement because at least for now in the state of Virginia, um, the, the, the voter will end up printing out their ballot and mailing it back in um, to the elections office, just like every other um, absentee voter would mail in their ballot. But again, the intent here is that you no longer have to maybe ask somebody to vote for you or mark your ballot for you. Um, the, the hope is that you can do that all independently and privately, while at the same time understanding that because of um, you know, a lot of different reasons, uh, legal reasons, at the end of the process, there'll be a paper ballot that's printed out and mailed back out to the uh, elections office. So with that, uh, unless you have any initial questions, what I want to do is, is introduce uh, Melissa once again, and she'll be walking through the ballot process and uh, showing you exactly, using JAWS, um, how the system can work. At the end of the process here, if you have any questions, feel free to um, chime in. Of course, uh, uh, you might have more questions for, for Melissa than me, but I'd be happy to answer any questions as well. So thank you very much. Great. Good evening, everyone. I introduced myself a bit earlier, but my name is Melissa Carney. I am an educational outreach consultant for Democracy Live. I'm also completely blind and a JAWS user. Um, so we talked a bit about, is this going to be an accessible demonstration for those who cannot see the screen? And the answer is yes. So I'm going to make sure that I'm sharing the sound as well. I'm also going to be describing exactly what keystrokes and what keys I'm pressing as I'm going through the demonstration. So you know exactly how I'm navigating it as a screen reader user. Um, just a bit about my background in the accessible voting realm. I was able to vote um, through the accessible absentee democracy live portal in the presidential election. I'm in your neighboring state of Pennsylvania, uh, not too far from New Jersey. So I'm, I'm very excited that one of our neighboring states is jumping on board. Um, that's fantastic. Um, I really hope that all of you will have the opportunity to use this system. I have to say it was incredibly empowering to be able to vote privately and independently for the first time. Um, I'm originally from Connecticut and we did not have that opportunity. So this is just, again, um, and you'll notice a very, very seamless process. You don't need to have advanced knowledge of assistive technology. You can use any sort of combination of browser and screen reader that you feel comfortable with, whether that be JAWS, NVDA, um, or vo voiceover on your computer or Mac or you can use voiceover on your phone. So if you feel most comfortable on your iPhone as your device, you can use that to vote. So it is a game changer. And without further ado, I'm going to share my screen and we can proceed with the demo. Meeting controls. 
I do your bicep. All right. Now, hopefully this is a suitable jaws rate for everyone. I don't like to have it too fast. Um, I wanted to make, make sure it's accessible to all levels of JAWS users. So we're going to start, now this is a ballot that's a bit more specific to New Jersey. Hi, so sorry, going... we can't hear, um, we can't Combo hear your... All oh, now we can. Yes, I, sorry, I muted that So I, while I was talking, but yeah, you, you should be able to hear it. And I'll try my best not to talk over um, JAWS as it's speaking. Um, because we all know how much Jaws likes to talk. So um, I'm going to start by navigating through this page using headings, okay? So we're gonna press H. Main menu heading level two. I do hereby certify subject to the penalties for fraudulent voting that heading level one, list of one items. Bullet, I am a person with a disability that prevents me from voting a paper ballot without assistance. List end. And. List of one items. Bullet, I am the person who applied for this accessible ballot. List end. I certify that all of the above is true checkbox checked. Okay, so we're going to check that. Um, that button is already checked here. So normally you just press space to check that. Okay, um, and just to demonstrate. Main region, I certify that all of the above is true checkbox not checked. Okay, that's the toggle. So you'll press that again to check Checked. It. Okay. If you want to proceed once you've agreed, then you can down arrow from here. Continue button. Press space on the continue button. I do hereby certify subject to the penalties for fraudulent voting that main region ballot marking heading level one. Okay. And here we have the ballot shown below. Um, so most of the time when you initially log into your ballot, you'll be prompted to enter in your voter specific credentials. So I believe this New Jersey specific demo is just kind of bypassing that extra step. Um, but you'll notice that you will have to enter in some identifying information to show that you are the voter. Okay, so here presented below, we have the ballot marking page. You'll notice that at the top of each page, there's an instructional heading. And what I mean by that is it's explaining exactly what page of the process you're on and you'll find instructions detailing what the process looks like from there underneath that sort of announcement instructional heading, okay? So if you down arrow here. Your ballot is presented below. To mark your selection, click on the checkbox. To remove a selection, click on the checkbox again. All right. To vote for a qualified write-in candidate who is not listed on the ballot, click the checkbox beside the write-in space at the end of the candidate list. Then type the candidate's name in the space. Heading level 2 official ballot. All right. So now we're going to go through the ballot. I'm going to show you how to mark selections. I'm going to show you how to unmark selections. I'm even going to make an intentional error so you can see how this accessible balloting tool prompts you to fix that error if you so choose. Okay, so let's use H for heading to start navigating through this ballot. For US Senator heading level three. All right, so here we have our first contest listed under this heading. Okay, so we can down arrow from here so you can view the selections and the options for this contest. Vote for not more than one. Group starts for US Senator. Three checkboxes. It will tell you exactly how many options you have to choose from. Santa Claus checkbox not checked. Ebenezer Scrooge checkbox not checked. Ryden checkbox not checked. Okay. So for today's purposes, we're going to arrow up and we're going to select Santa Claus. Evan Santa Claus checkbox not checked. For U.S. Senator Group, Santa Claus checkbox checked. You'll also notice if you're a screen reader user that to prevent any dis, um, any confusion, there it announces the contest followed by the selection you just made. So they're paired together um, once selected, which is really helpful. All right, now we can proceed to the next heading and the next contest. For representative to Congress heading level three. And we're going to down arrow here. Vote for not more than one. Group start for representative to Congress. Four checkboxes. Amelia Earhart checkbox not checked. Charles Chuck Eager checkbox not checked. Charles Lindbergh checkbox not checked. Ryden checkbox not checked. Okay, so we're going to up arrow and we're going to check off Amelia Earhart. 
Charles Charles Amelia Earhart checkbox not checked. For representative the Congress group, Amelia Earhart checkbox not checked. Checked. Okay, now we can proceed to the next contest using H for heading once again. City Council heading level three. Vote for not more than two. Group start City Council. Five checkboxes. Johnny Cash checkbox not checked. Elvis Presley checkbox not checked. Dolly Parton checkbox not checked. Write in one of two checkbox not checked. Okay, so if you notice, and I will up arrow so you can hear this repeated instruction again. Dolly Elvis Johnny five group start city vote for not more than two. But it's telling you to vote for two candidates rather than one. So this is that intentional error I'm going to make that I referenced earlier. I'm only going to select one candidate. So you can see what that warning and that error message looks like when you go to the review page later on. It's going to prompt you to add an additional candidate if you so choose. So again, we're going to make an error right here and only select one candidate rather than two. Group start city council, five checkboxes. Johnny Cash checkbox not checked. All right, we'll check Johnny Cash. City Council Group, Johnny Cash checkbox checked. Okay, and now we can move on to the next contest, but keep that in mind when we get to that review page. For City Waste Director heading level three. Okay. Vote for not more than one. Group start for City Waste Director. Two checkboxes. DR William McDougall checkbox not checked. Ryan checkbox not checked. Okay, um, so now we're going to demonstrate here a write-in candidate. So to write in a candidate, all you have to do is check that write-in candidate box. For City Waste Director Group, write-in checkbox checked. And then you'll down arrow to the edit box below. Write-in, edit. All right. Forms mode on, write-in, edit. Do we have any volunteers uh, from the audience who'd like their, their name entered in? as the write-in candidate. It could just be your first name, that's okay. Linda Melendez. All right. Linda. Linda, can you spell your last name for me so I don't butcher it on this official ballot? M-E-L-E-N-D-E-Z. Wonderful, thank you, thank you. All thank right. you. Now, now, Linda, careful now, it's, 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 it's for city waste director. That's, that's, that's a lofty responsibility. Oh, I'm good at cleaning up. I'm good at cleaning <laughs> <You're> up. Clean up. <laughs> I'm, I'm really appreciating the enthusiasm here. Um, it, it's, Ask it's anybody great. who knows me, they'll tell you I'm good at cleaning up. <laughs> it's a good quality. Uh, all right. So um, just to, to show you here. Write in. If you uh, up arrow here to write in and down arrow. Edit Linda Melendez. Okay. Right there in the edit box, you'll see Linda's name. So there we have our write-in candidate for City Waste Director. Okay, so now we can proceed on to the next contest. Thank you again for volunteering. Article one heading level three. Okay. Vote yes or no. So you're going to see that this is a written text contest. So we're going to hear a lot about Votersville and then we're going to choose yes or no, and if we want to agree, okay? Shall chapter I, section 103 of the Votersville City Charter be hereby amended as follows. Chapter one, incorporation and general provision sec 103. Whoa. Established, there shall be three three wards for the city of Votersville and the boundaries of the wards shall be fixed from time to time by the board of Civil authority subject to the approval of the city council. The boundaries shall be fixed so as to provide equal or near equal distribution of population. Among the three three wards in accordance with the most recent federal census. Group start article one. Okay. Two checkboxes. Yes checkbox not checked. Or. No checkbox not checked. So we're going to up arrow and we're going to press space to check yes. Yes checkbox not checked. Article one group. Yes checkbox checked. Okay, now we can down arrow. No checkbox, not that checked. That was the last contest. Group N, go back button, continue button. So once you filled out and marked the selections on this ballot, you can press the continue button at the bottom of this page. Selection review heading level one. Okay, and this is the selection review page that I briefly mentioned earlier. 
Um, so you'll see, as I said before, it's a uniform format. So once again, the screen reader is announcing the primary heading at the top of the page. That's telling you um, what, what page you're on. And then below, you'll find the instructions for said page. Your ballot choices are shown below. To change any selection, click the change button next to your selection. Heading level two official ballot. Okay, so once again, similarly to the ballot marking and the ballot itself, we can use H for heading to navigate with JAWS. For U.S. Senator heading level three, Santa Claus. Change for U.S. Senator button. All right, so you saw the contest name, the selection you made, and the option to change that's specific for that particular contest. So we can proceed on. For representative to Congress heading level three, Amelia Earhart. Change for representative to Congress button. And next contest. City Council heading level three, Johnny Cash. Warning. And pay attention here. Missing one of two selections. And there is that intentional error that we made that I wanted to demonstrate. So here it's prompting you to go back to the ballot if you wish to make that additional selection because it's telling you, you only made, you only selected one candidate instead of two. You can proceed, and we've had a lot of questions on this. You can proceed with, um, with printing out your ballot and you can proceed with the process if you only want to select one. Say for example, you only know one of the candidates um, and you do not wish to select two, but it's just giving you the option in case you did make that mistake if you want to go back and change it. All right, so for today's purposes, we are going to go back and change that. So change city council button. We'll press this button that corresponds with that particular contest. City council heading level three. And then it will bring you directly back to that contest. So you don't have to go searching through the ballot and remember um, where it was and what order the contests were in, it'll bring you directly here. So all you have to do is down arrow in order to make your additional selection. Your first selection will already be checked. Vote for not more than two. Group start city council. Five checkboxes. Johnny Cash checkbox checked. So you can see that Johnny Cash is still checked. So we just have to go down. Elvis Presley checkbox not checked. And we're going to check Elvis additionally. City Council group. Elvis Presley checkbox not checked. Checked. All right. So now we can continue down arrowing. Dolly Parton write in. One write in. Two group end. Go back to review page button. And we're going to press this back to review page. City Council heading level three. So we are back on the review page and it brings you right back to where you were um, with this contest. So if you down arrow, you can see that the error has been officially fixed. Johnny Cash, Elvis Presley, change City Council okay. button. All right, so that's that. Um, pretty, pretty straightforward. So now we can uh, move on to the next contest on this review page. For City Waste Director heading level three, write in Linda Melendez. Okay, there's our write in candidate displayed right there. Change for City Waste Director button. And I'm going to change button that's uniform throughout. Okay, and now. Article one heading level three. The final contest we chose. Yes, change article one button. Okay. And now we can move on to the next page by continuing to down arrow. Link skip to bottom. Go back button. Continue button. So you'll see this Go back button, button above the continue button. And again, you'll see that layout on every page as well. That's just in case for some reason you, you just find it easier to go back to the ballot. Um, you want to make multiple changes. You want to remark your ballot, whatever it may be. You can always go back to the previous page that's above the continue button. Continue button. So we're going to press the continue to print move on. Print your selections heading level one. Okay, and here's the print selections page. Now, I just want to note that you don't yourself have to own a printer. Um, we all know that this is only half accessible right now. Um, signing and knowing where to sign are, are, is another demon entirely, especially for the visually impaired. Um, but there are more and more states that are choosing to adopt electronic return. So marking and returning the ballot is fully accessible. But 
as I was saying, you do not have to own a printer. You can save the ballot to a PDF. You can uh, load it onto a flash drive, take it to someone else's computer that you trust, a library, wherever you feel comfortable and, and print it out there. So you do have options, you do have flexibility. And just for your own purposes, if you want a backup copy, if something happens, um, you can, if your printer runs out of ink, save it as a PDF, it's always a nice option. Okay, so we can down arrow here now that we're on this page to read the instructions. Click on the print selections button below to print your ballot selections. After your selections finish printing, click the continue button to view instructions. On returning your ballot, print selections button. Okay, so you'd press this. Print selections button. Print, print preview selections. dialog. Print preview dialog. Save button. Okay, and my my computer is just defaulting to save because I do not have a print printer set up currently. Um, so normally you'd see save, print, and you'd be able to um, to view and or manage that document as you choose. So I'm just going to cancel for today's purposes instead of instead of saving. Before you printing. go. Yeah. Can you possibly, you had said that it says what page you're on. I might have missed it, but it didn't sound as though Jaws was saying what page. Can you indicate or show how you actually can find out what page you're on with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me let me cancel out of, out of here just because this is the printing, the, this is the page that it prints off of. Um, but there is that announcement heading at the top to show print selections. I can show you that. I'd also be happy to show you the layout of this page where you choose your printer settings if you'd like to see that as well. Okay. So. Cancel, print your selections, Google Chrome, main region, print selections button. Okay, so if I arrow back up from that option. On return and click on the heading level one, print your selections. That's the main heading at the top of the page, print your selections. And if for some reason as a JAWS user, you're alt tabbing to another tab or you want to go back into your ballot, it'll announce it on Google Chrome or whatever browser you're using. It'll let you know what phase of the process you're on. If for some reason you've exited out of the ballot completely and need to alt tab back in. Um, I hope that answers your question. I hope that was helpful. Um, and again, I'm, I'm happy to also demonstrate what that print selections page looks like if, if that would be helpful to anyone. Just let me know. Uh, with, with respect, uh, it still doesn't say, you said it shows the heading. It doesn't say like, for example, page three of three. Maybe that's oh. on the ballots, but it doesn't, it had not said that. So how do you know if you're completing the entire ballot? Right. So again, it, it doesn't announce the number page you're on. It announces what part of the process you're on. So once again, once once you complete each process, there'll be a heading announcing what phase you're now on. When you're done with the ballot and you're done with the review and you've printed your selections, it will keep prompting you until the end of the process. Um, so once you've success only once you've successfully completed um marking your ballot and printing it, you will get a success message. So it will just continue to prompt you and let you know what part of the process you're on. Not necessarily what number of pages you're on, but what part of the process you're on. I hope that makes sense. And, and this is Brian. Um, as you're going through the ballot, it will say, you know, page two of three or page three of three um, as you're navigating through the ballot. As Melissa said, when you get to this page here, it's just telling you the process that you're at right now, but it will highlight uh, how many pages you're on um, throughout the ballot marking process, if okay. that makes sense. Oh, sorry, because I hadn't heard that. Well, this is a very short ballot. So typically, typically the ballots we're using in an actual election are much longer. And it will, um, I can tell you from voting in, in Pennsylvania's election, this past November, it did announce the number of pages as I was going through, and that was very helpful. Hold the audio now unmuted. Question, please. Um, I think the answer is yes. This is Anne Marie Cook from New Jersey. The public question, as you were reviewing your choices already, and then you reviewed yes or no, if you wanted to, I'm thinking you could, in fact, reread re the public question to make sure that you understood it correctly. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So you can always, if you, if you want a quick way to do that, 
you can always just press that change selection button as if you were going to change it, right? And then um, go to that specific contest. You'd be brought to that contest on the ballot. And then you'd have the option to down arrow and read that particular um, article or whatever you're voting on. And then you don't have to change anything. You can just proceed back to the review page from there. I hope that answers your question. Oh, yes, it does. I thought that's exactly what I thought. Wonderful. <laughs> okay. One, one other question, and maybe I'm jumping the gun on this one. When is New Jersey actually going to adopt this as its um, accessible ballot? So this is Brian, and um, actually right now. So there's an election that just uh, began, I believe, a few days ago. Yeah. And it goes, yep. And uh, so all you need to do is contact your local county clerk or county elections official. And they will, uh, in turn, provide back to you the link that you can click on and uh, provide this uh, tool to you to start voting um, for this election. It's, it's up and running right now. They'll, they'll give you the code or the... the um, yeah, the, they'll, they'll, they'll send you a link. The unique code for you, too, as a, as a voter. Right, right. Okay. And then, yep. So it'll bring you right to your ballot. Oh. And just just like what uh, Melissa is showing you here today. Super. Just no Santa Claus on that ballot. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I just voted with my husband's assistance today at home. And um, this is, aside from these webinars that you're so generously offering, we haven't heard anything with our Board of Elections here in, in our county about the availability of, of an accessible ballot. Well, and that's you know, another question, isn't it, too, is, is outreach. Um, I mean, we, we've been, you know, I saw it in Pennsylvania. I mean, that's something Brian and I and Democracy Live have been really trying to figure out is, well, it's not, a, not even a matter of, of showing the tool and demonstrating it, but the other half of the equation is how do we make more people aware of it and how do we kind of extend that outreach um, beyond the participants in these demos and, and really it's a lot of it's word of mouth, you know, tell your friends, have them have their friends, you know, learn about it from those friends. It's, um, you know, and, and hold, just hold holding counties accountable um, and states accountable um, for, for advertising um, and for making sure that, that that platform is, is, you know, that the public is made well aware of it. So just kind of finding different strategies within your specific state um, different platforms that where you might be able to talk about this issue and might be able to tell more people and, and reach more people. That's that's the key, and it's very state by state specific. Well, would, will this also um, be available in a sample ballot format so you can review who the candidates are before you finally get the opportunity to cast an actual ballot? You know, I love that idea, and it's something that, that's how we got started back in two thousand and eight was on the accessible sample ballots. To make sure that it wasn't just the ballot itself, but the ballot information was fully okay. accessible to all voters. <laughs> now, in the state of New Jersey, I'll have to follow back up with the state. Um, you know, if there is a, a demand for it, uh, that's 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 quite possible. Maybe not for this election, um, but it's certainly something we're doing in, in about 20 other states around the country. The sample oh, yeah. ballot. This is just worlds better than that antique Fisher Price thing they called an accessible device. You know, voting shouldn't take three hours. <laughs> right, right. This is great. Thank you. Thanks for being here tonight. Thank so, you for joining us. Um, Brian, um, so this is um this is Linda again. Um, if you guys wanted to get me a blurb, um, we can send it out to our members in New Jersey, letting them know. We can also share with CBBI. Um, as they shared this event this evening with their consumers. Um, so word of mouth is great, but you can never advertise or promote too much, especially when something is accessible. So if you guys would help me get an email together, I, I would be more than glad to get that out to the members and non-members on, on our listserv. Absolutely, we'll, we'll certainly do that. And you know, I know Linda, you're, you're busy now that you're you're running for a city waste uh, director. But if you have time to do that, well, <laughs> well this is all part of cleaning up. This is part of my job duties. This is all part of cleaning up. So, how do you mail it back? Do you need a special envelope? Because if you're going to drop it in the accessible 
um, I'm sorry, if you're going to drop it in the uh, secure ballot box at your municipal building, the, the, how do you put it in, in an envelope that won't get deep six that'll be recognized? Right. So I think, um, Melissa, if you'd like to continue with the, with the demonstration, just kind of wrap up the process. Um, it'll highlight the instructions. Okay. That... Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So once again, to refresh, in level one print your we're selections. on that print selections page. So Click on the print selections button below the print your ballot selections. After your selections finished printing, click the continue button to view instructions on returning your ballot. Okay. Print selections button. So like I like I did before, you'd go into that and choose your printer settings. Um, you can choose to save as a PDF, as I recommended, if, if you wish as well. And then also when you go into that, um, you will be able to see how exactly your selections are laid out. And that's really helpful. I know a lot of us um, like to use uh, scanning apps on our phones or whatnot to, to make sure everything looks right on, on a piece of paper and um, before we submit any, any formal documents. And you can still do that. But what's great about this software is it will kind of show you that layout so you don't have to use another piece of technology and you can save that step. Um, all right, so let's continue as if you did print your selections or saved it as a PDF, whichever you prefer. Go back button, continue button. Okay, and we can press this continue button. Print your selections. Continue button. Mail in voter using the accessible ballot portal heading level one. Okay. A person may be fined and imprisoned and may also lose the right to vote until restored by law if that person attempts to vote fraudulently by mail in ballot. Prevents the voting of a legal voter. Certifies falsely any information. Interferes with a person's secrecy of voting. Tampers with ballots or election. Documents or helps another person to do so. Heading level two, returning your ballot. List of two items. One, insert the completed ballot into the envelope provided to you in the mail by your county. If you do not have this envelope, you may request one be mailed to you from your county clerk or you may use an envelope you have. Two, seal the envelope. List end. Heading level three, filling out the certificate. Complete the certificate attached to the flap of the envelope and sign the certificate. Heading level three, mailing your ballot. List of three items. One, enclose the envelope with the certificate and the outer return envelope provided. If you do not have this envelope, you may request one be mailed to you from your county clerk. Two, seal the outer envelope. Three, mail to your county board of elections as soon as possible. List end. Your ballot will be valid and canvassed as long as it bears a postmark date not later than the day of the election and is received by the county board of elections within seven days after the time of the closing of the polls. Go back button. End session button. Okay, so those are the instructions that are specific to New Jersey. Um, so there, there might be some additional questions on how all of that works. Um, Brian might be able to provide some more insight, but a lot of that is very specific to New Jersey as a state and not necessarily to democracy live. So every state has its own requirements as to how you're supposed to mail in your ballot and, um, and return it. So that's, that's New Jersey specific instructions. Um, for example, some states might have one, one envelope that's uh, for Pennsylvania, they have um, the secrecy envelope where you put the ballot that has um, a different texture. So it's a rougher texture than the outer envelope that you insert, the, insert it into to mail um, so that blind voters can tell the difference and they can kind of fold up the ballot into that envelope and know that it's the right one. Um, they know which envelope to sign as well. Um, as far as signing, some states will place a sticker on the line. They'll allow you to sign anywhere on the envelope. So we, again, it's, this is very specific to New Jersey. Um, and if it, I, I would advise you, if, if you have any feedback, let your counties know if, it's, if, it, if you're uncomfortable with the process, 
um, if there's changes that can be made um, and just make sure your voice is heard. Okay, so once you read over those instructions, um, you can go end session button end session end session success heading level one and you'll get this nice little success message here please follow the provided instructions to return your ballot main region end okay and that is the process start to finish i hope that was helpful i'm happy to answer any questions as a, um, a fellow person with a disability um, but thank you everyone so much for listening and, and for your attention. And it's a pleasure to be Hi. with you here tonight. Hi, Tony oh, Santiago here. I have a question. Hello, am I being heard? Yes. Hi. I think Hi. I think Hi. two of you are trying to speak at the oh. same time. Tony got on. Uh, I don't know. Okay, I think Chris there. Chris was trying to say something as well. Go okay. ahead. Go ahead, Tony. Oh, okay, thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. I, good, because I, I, I got to do the goals and I really wanted to ask this earlier, so I'm going to ask it now. I have a question about security with browsers. Is there any uh, uh, browser that you will warn people against? I know Internet Explorer, if anybody's using that, I would strongly recommend you do not use that. Um, Safari now with iOS 15 has a new thing where you can um, hide your IP address, would that be a good idea? Is Safari a good browser to use? Is, is, is it accessible with, with, uh, with this tool? Or um, uh, which browsers do you recommend or more importantly, not recommend? So this, this tool has been tested with over 90 combinations of different screen readers and browsers. So, I mean, it's really up to your preference and your comfort level and what browser you're familiar with. I'm personally using Google Chrome. I have used Internet Explorer, I have used Safari with this tool, and the experience is consistent throughout. So it's really up to your comfort level. Okay, I use Edge for most stuff, so, and they're using the, the Chromium uh, mm -hmm. technology. So, I mean, I'm sure it's accessible. I'm just worried about security, um, the most important thing. I might try it out with Safari before I do any of the others. So thank you very much again for your time. This is a great presentation, very important, thank you. Hilton, if I could, I can also um, share with you yes. that this has been uh, reviewed and, and, and certified by every state in the country that has a certification process for security. Uh, we've been through the Department of Homeland Security and the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Agency, uh, sponsored by the federal government, as well as over 100 cybersecurity researchers have reviewed this, this technology here. And then importantly, when you're marking your ballot, you're not marking it online per se in the server. It's actually on the client side. And so it's all done at your local environment. Um, so oh, that helps great. from a security standpoint. Very good. I appreciate it again. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great night. I'll, I'll ask for other questions. Thank you. Uh, this is Vincent DeLorza. Hi, Vincent. Uh, hi. Uh, can I use uh, I'm sorry. I thought Chris. I thought, I'm sorry. I thought Chris was waiting. To, to, to ask a question. Yeah. Oh, Sorry about that, Vincent. I didn't mean to cut you off, Vincent, but I know Chris was waiting. It's up there. I'll go at the end. You go in the end, Chris? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, Vincent, did you have a question? Left the meeting. Uh, yes. Uh, can I use a signature stamp? on the ballot and the envelope. You know that that's up to the, the county. That That's a type of question that you may want to use your, your uh, reach out to your county to ask. You know, it'd um, be the I, same. This is, yeah. this is Mary Saccone from oh, Display Rights, New Jersey. And that's something that we've tried to get the state to agree to, but they will not allow stamped signatures. Um, they Because they use the signatures to match with your is a way to identify you so they will not use a stamp signature that's still not allowed but what you can do is if you have an issue with your signature if the signatures don't match because your signatures change every time then they'll send you a form back to fill out to um to basically verify your signature and verify the signature so so even if your signatures don't match each time there's going to be a way to verify your signature so it will count. Okay, thank you. So then it becomes more important to uh, 
vote as early as possible. That is correct. Yeah. Thank you. Anne Marie Cook. A um, couple questions. I'll ask them quickly. I'm assuming in order to use this system, you already have had to been approved for uh, an absentee ballot to vote at home, correct? Hilton Santiago has left the meeting. Yes, no. Uh, yeah, this is Mary Sacone again from Display Rights New Jersey. Yes, you for this system, this is basically to take uh, to go in place of and vote by mail ballot. So you would still have to apply for your vote by mail ballot like you okay. would if you're just uh, a regular vote by mail ballot. And this is for all 21 counties. That's correct. And final question, what kind of if one of us wanted to vote in person, what kind of has there been any revision to the uh, voting machines that are at the polls current or will be at the polls um, uh, next week, I guess. And okay. the way accessibility. Uh, yeah, the uh, some counties have bought new uh, voting machines, so there may be changes. All voting machines have to have an accessible feature, but as we know, some are more accessible than others in person. Um, <laughs> And I say the counties are buying new equipment. It depends on what county you're in as to whether, um, you know, some of the new counties, I think Middlesex and Union, Essex has gotten new machines and they are all much easier to use uh, with the uh, headsets than the old Sequoia machines. But I think some counties still have old Sequoia. So it's, it's a county by county um, issue. They all need to have some type of audio component, but as I say, there are better components than others. Okay, so this sounds like a great alternative. Um, and it's like voting like a real human being. <laughs> so it's great, thank you. <laughs> and thanks for the demo. Absolutely. Anne-Marie Leikow, um, question about the security level of this. Um, I think, first of all, thank you so much, both of you for having this. It is very interesting. Um, and it's definitely in the right direction. Um, I think Brian, you had indicated that this is not on the internet, that we don't have to worry, it's on a client server. Is that client server going to be the state of New Jersey's client server or is it the organization server? And actually how much security, what kind of level, uh, what level of encryption or what kind of level of security does that particular client server have? Right. It's a great question, Anne-Marie. And when I say the client, that means that it's on the, the voter's local computer. So it's not on our, it's not on the server environment. You know, we, we do partner with Amazon AWS with, with kind of the front end part of this. But when it comes to actually marking your ballot, that's being done on your computer. It's never being sent, you know, over the wire or in a remote server. It's all done on the, what they call the client side, which is actually on the voter's laptop or the voter's computer or device. Um, so I don't know if that helps or not, but it's, it's never actually done on a server. It's always done on the, on the client or the, the voter's home computer. So then one last, just follow up if I may, um, since clearly, I guess you'd have to, uh, to, to start the process of the, um, uh, the balloting, you have to indicate, uh, whatever code is given to you and input that. Is that something more like just typing it in so that not that it's going to release the document, but just so that it will show up when it's printed out? Yeah, th th that's correct. The way that it's uh, it will work for this go around, for, for this election, uh, when you get sent the link, the link's gonna take you directly to the ballot that you uh, require. Um, it's, we have various options of doing it, for, but for, for New Jersey, the way that they elected to do it for this election to make it easier for voters is all you have to do is click on the link and it's going to bring you, it's going to open up a browser. And within that browser, it's going to be delivered to you, your ballot. Um, but that browser is all done on the client side. But so the link will be on yeah. what, where is the, okay. So it's going to go to the link and download from the link into That's my, correct. into my laptop, for example. That's um, correct. I presume, and I would hope that the links are wherever that link is generated or wherever it's getting from the, uh, to download the uh, mm -hmm. thing onto my computer, I presume that is a secure site? That, that is, that so, yep. So, so that, that we part, go ahead, I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry, I was going to say, is that the New Jersey state side or county side um, or what exactly is it? Would so that, that's, yep, that, that's the Democracy Live balloting portal site that generates the ballot. Uh, we then send that link back to the local elections, the county, and then they'll review the ballot to make sure that it matches the ballot that, that the voter is supposed to get. And then they're going to send that link off to you after they do the inspection to make sure that it's the right ballot going to the right voter. So the, the, the Moxie Live site and the county ballot or county website, they're both secure? Yes. And I so you know, I use that term broadly, right? But but just so how we partner with Amazon, we, we work with uh, uh, Amazon just, in fact, got last week selected by the National Security Agency. They've been approved by the CIA, by FBI, Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Defense, right, for to, to host and secure some of the nation's most critical you know, documents. Um, so that's in large part why we partner with, with Amazon on this or AWS. Okay. Um, but yeah. Oh, forgive me. I'm just, and again, I don't mean to be a pest about this, but I'm, I'm rather curious and concerned about security of things. Um, so even though they might, they have the ability to encrypt at a very high level, um, it, can we be assured that that is the level that they're going to encrypt this in, or is it some other level, or is there a way that I could find out at Amazon? Um, you know, I'll have to follow back up with you on, on, on the approach for New Jersey, but in terms okay. of, of the, the ballot marking, and then feel free to, you know, my name is Brian, Brian, B-R-Y-A-N at democracylive.com. If you'd like to follow back up with me, um, you know, we're in about half the states around the country and every state's a little bit different. Um, but in this, in this deployment, what I can assure you is that none of the markings are going to be done over the internet, you know, over the wire on a remote server. It's all done sort of like if you're typing on your Word document, right, on your local computer, it's all done locally. There's nothing being sent over the internet. I, I get that, but it's the old, what happens if someone decides, a nefarious type decides to go in and download 10 or 100 ballots? What's to stop them from doing that? Well, when you return, when you submit your ballot, uh, there's a signature that's there, that, that just like every other absentee voter. And so even if you try to download 100 ballots, um, they're only going to accept the one ballot with the correct signature and all the other 99 will be rejected and probably investigated. Um, so they only can accept the one ballot with the proper signature, just like every other absentee voter. So they'll have the code on when it, I'm sorry, they'll have the code. That's the last one. They'll have the code on when it gets downloaded to my, my uh, computer for me. When, when you, okay. when you, yeah, when you access the ballot from that link, and you're marking your ballot, you will then mark it, you'll print it out and then, or save it and, and bring it to another printer, but it'll be a printout. You'll also have the signature page that every other absentee voter has. And when you sign that signature page, that's essentially the affidavit proving that's, that's who you are. And so when the ballot is submitted or mailed back to the elections office, the very first thing they do is they're gonna review that signature to make sure it matches the signature that you have on file. And then they start processing the ballot. Thank you. You bet. Um, this is Mary Saccone. Um, yeah, the, the security issue is one of the reasons that it's, they still want a printed ballot, want you to print it out. And you need to use the, the envelope that the county provides you to return the ballot. So you'll get a vote by mail envelope. So that's why that's why you really only are going to be able to return. You can't just print multiple ballots and return all of them. You can only return one. These are okay. all been. Oh, go ahead, Chris. Hi, everybody. Uh. <laughs> I just had <laughs> I use really like mobile as a screen reader. Will it work with that? I'm sorry, Chris, what was it? Which screen reader or? Read it in like gold mobile. So what mode of, of screen reader? I, I read, read and write. Read and write, yeah. I don't use JAWS. So yep. will, it, will 
will it be different for me? So it, it's been, this has been tested for the major screen readers such as JAWS, NVDA, voiceover, right? Um, uh, narrator, right? <laughs> Who uses yeah. narrator? Yeah. Um, but read, write, Chris, if, if I could, um, I'm going to add that to the list to make sure that that's, we have, we've reviewed it for read and write. Yeah. It's takes help. I can email you this information. Hold the audio now unmuted. I just want to make sure it will work with my screen reader. Yeah, and and just to make sure that I'm I'm hearing you correctly, you've got read and write screen reader. Is that yeah. correct? Okay. All right. Can I, can we follow back up with you, Chris, on that? Yeah. Terrific. <laughs> I hey. email you. I can email you. Please, please do. Um, if it's easier, I can email you. I can go get a, a, a piece of paper right now and get your email address or, you know, why don't you email me? Okay. And, yeah. You you can get it from from uh, uh, probably from the Mary. yeah Mary yeah mm. and it, it's again it's Brian B R Y A N at democracylive.com. Okay, thank. Thanks, Chris. Hey, Brian, it's the count. Uh, it's it, it's the newly elected disposal person. Um. I have a question for you. Um, is this recording um, a link that we can share with others or put on our website so that they can um, um, listen to it if they were unable to attend the meeting this evening? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, uh, unless, um, Melissa, do you see any concerns? Do you have any concerns with that? No, that's fine with me. In fact, I think that makes total sense. Um, I, you know, again, as many people as we can reach to notify about this tool, the better. I think it's so important. And, you know, some people can't make the webinars and, and they shouldn't miss out on the tool just because they can't make a webinar. Absolutely. So can you email me the link? Yep, for sure. Great. And, um, in that same, I'll send you the link, but also I'll follow up uh, to Chris's question about read and write. And Thank perhaps you. Linda, you can forward that off to, to Chris. Okay, um, do you have my email address? I do, yes. Okay, great, thank you. And again, I'll, I'll wrap it up uh, before maybe Melissa, if you have some final words, but I'll just say that uh, the, Education and outreach that we've done tonight is, is just really the first step. Um, you know, the next step is if you can, uh, you know, and if you want to participate, you reach out to your local uh, county office and, and, and they will provide you the link to be able to fully participate. Um, you know, we have had, we've had over a decade now of, of doing uh, of this type of technology and deploying and implementing it. And we've had a handful of, of states that have done it initially and then maybe because of a, a, a lack of involvement or, or I should say a lack of, of activity, uh, they, they stopped implementing it and stopped deploying it. So um, just keep that in mind. You know, I, I think it's one of those things where the more that it's being used, it, it shows the states and the localities and the, you know, the counties um, that it's that it will continue being used. So um, in whatever way you can kind of help get the word out and, and educate and outreach to your communities that it's available, um, it, it could help people vote independently and privately. And also, I mean, outreach could also include writing newspaper articles, talking to news stations about the importance of accessible voting. I mean, this, this could take so many different forms, um, you know, depending on what your, your comfort level is with advocacy. Um, and I also just wanted to say, if there's any any desire for another demonstration or enough interest for another demonstration in the future, we're happy to accommodate that. Um, anything we can do to support everyone and, and make sure that people are aware of this tool. 
we have a couple of hands being raised. Up. Um, I just want to say that Evie has her hand raised. I'm not sure if you guys realize that, that she might have a question. Evie Trejo. Hi, Evie. Hi, how are you? I'm very well, thank uh, you. <laughs> great. Um, I have a question in terms of, um, I don't happen to have a printer now. Um, I do have which I didn't have the last election, I do have use of a computer with JAWS. Um, and um, I was wondering the, what's the process of, you know, doing the ballot and then going somewhere else to print it up? Um, you know, is it, is it using a, um, like a thumb drive kind of thing? Yeah, so as long as you save it to a PDF format and just save the document onto your computer wherever you feel comfortable, you can save it directly onto the flash drive, you can sorry, uh, save it directly onto your computer, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Yes, you can get it right on a flash drive, um, take it over to your, you know, wherever you have access to a printer in a trusted location, and absolutely. Um, so that way your, your ballot's right there, it's portable. Um, so you yourself do not need access to a printer. Okay, that that's yeah, that's a biggie. Um, mm -hmm. Also, uh, what the heck? I know I had another question. <laughs> um, by what date do you think um, I would have to have the request in um, for the absentee ballot? Zone. Might be a question for Mary. Yeah, this is my, that, that I can tell you that. This is Mary Saccone again. Um, if you're going to request a vote by mail ballot by mail, then you need to have that into the county clerk no later than seven days before the election. If you, if you can't get it in seven days before the election because the mail is slow or whatever, then you can go and hit, hand deliver the request by mail up to 3 p.m. the day before the election. So those are the two rules. So you've got seven days before the election, they receive it by mail because otherwise they won't have enough time to mail the ballots out. So that's, that's the sure. rule. Okay. Um, and then it's in person up to 3 p.m. the day before the election. So oh, okay. if you decide you like to do this and you wanna do this going forward all the time, you can mark on your vote by mail ballot that you want an absentee ballot or vote by mail ballot every single election. But if you don't, then you're going to have to request it for each election that you want to vote by mail ballot. Got it. Yeah, because unfortunately, I used to vote using the audio. No problem. And now it seems like they don't have anybody trained in the polls um, to run the audio. And they they hand it to me and say, look, it's lit, lit up. <laughs> So I, you know, I, that's, I mean, I do like to go in person and, and vote, but I see it's becoming an issue. So I might try this alternative. Great. Thank you so much well, for joining us. I would us. go ahead and get the app. Uh, if you want to try it, get the vote by mail application in the ASAP. And that way you can get the, and then when you send it in, then you, you need to contact the clerk and say, hey, I need an accessible vote by mail um, system. They just set this up. Um, the state just got this, or this contract was just signed, what, a couple weeks ago, Brian? Like two weeks ago weekend? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's why we're just not being able to, we're now being able to tell people to do this. So, um, but the county clerks should all be made, have been made aware that this is available to them and you can get it, but you need to get that application in if you sure. want to try it. Sure, sure. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Very good, very well done presentation. That was quite clear and thank you so much. So for the June, it's Anne Marie again, for the June primaries, will we be able to um, use this system also? Um, <laughs> Brian, is the contract for just this election? I know I'm going to be taught. Um, yeah, I think for this particular form, it, it's for this election. They will have something going forward. I they have to develop a new contract or um, something like that. That's that's with the state. Um, 
they they kind of dropped the ball this time. It was only when I say, hey, are you having you accessible vote by mail? mail that they like, oops, we didn't do that. So that's what oh, they got. Oh, man, yeah, yeah, it's a little late in the day to publicize this, unfortunately. Yeah, well, it's, they, they're a little overwhelmed with early voting, which we're doing it for the first time ever. So they, they totally dropped the ball on this, but they you know, got the system up and running. They are going to have something going forward and you know, Brian, I'm sure you're going to be applying for the con, you know, contract going forward. But I think for right now, there will be something for the June primary. But for the okay. for this election, this is the system. Because I'm sorry, I really wanted to get my ballot in, so I did it the old-fashioned way with assistance at home. But um, if you get this in June, I'm there. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, um, don't worry. It, we're gonna. I'm gonna be talking to the director of the division of elections after the election once they get through the whole early voting stuff. Um, and we want to, and and because um, they do, they do want to make sure that they have this. And we're hoping to work towards getting electronic return, which will make it fully accessible. Right now, the printing of the ballot is makes it not as accessible. You know, that's not accessible. The actual paper part of it, but. Um, we want to try to get to a point where they would allow electronic return. They tried it once before last year and they got sued about the electronic return. So that's why we don't have electronic return. They only have the printed ballot. But we're, we're going to work on that. So. Mary, as an FYI, we have um, electronic return going on right now in a number of other localities and states. Um, so it does exist. It's available. It just depends on. Yeah, you know, and I say, uh, and I wanna, I, I am all for electronic return. The problem was the state got sued last year, and right. they're they're a little gung shy about not doing electronic return. So right. we're gonna, but I know the director of the division of elections really wants electronic return. He wants it for not only people with disabilities, but also for the um, overseas and um, military voters as well. Um, so so we'll, we're 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 gonna work on that. But I just wanted to get something for this election to get going. But um, actually, if you can send me a list of all the states that do have electronic return, that would be helpful. Sure, be happy to. Well, we, I, we see you have one more hand up. Ivis, is that, or Evie's, is that a hand that you meant to have up or was that just? Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to put it down. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Right. So Brian, Melissa, and Mary, this is Linda again. And I just want to thank you so much um, for having this this evening. I know Mary reached out to me and we set this up and I think this is great. And we should definitely keep on um, these webinars um, going um, forward to make sure that uh, everyone gets on the bandwagon and they may not be comfortable this time. We may have to ask them a second, third, fourth, and fifth time before they finally say, yes, I want to do this. So I, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. And we're always available for any further um, presentations or information we can share with you. I have a question about the electronic signature. Can you do that? Can you use that on your ballot? Um, because it, it would be universally recognized. Um. The, the there is no there is no signature on the actual ballot. The ballot does not have a signature. The signature is on the envelope, and that has to be a handwritten signature. But if it's not legible, um, you know, because I don't I don't write my full name, so it's it's just a couple of characters, and that's why. All it why has I'm to do is match. Yeah, all it has to do is match your signature for that's on file with this uh, with the county. So, okay. And, it, okay. And, it said, and yeah, so it doesn't have to be your full signature. My signature doesn't look like I, I can write it very neatly, but most of the time it's kind of a scribble. Um, but it matches what I've, I've given the uh, signature update. If it doesn't okay. match, they last year they passed a law that requires um, the county to get in touch with you and let you know, hey, the signatures didn't match. We need to verify that you were the person that submitted this ballot. So that's it's a it's a different it will be a different system but that's why as i say it's not a question of the signature it's what the signature matches so if you have an x as a signature and that's what they have on file for you the x is fine i mean that's what you do so okay okay thank you
this is Melissa. I just also wanted to point out um, quickly that we talked a lot in the demonstration and, and you know, of course, demoed screen readers and how they're used. Um, but this software is also accessible for people using sip and puff devices, jelly switches. You know, we have people who are, who are voting with their feet. Um, I mean, it's it's in, it's it's a very very universal system. So once again, I know we focused on kind of the screen reader interaction aspect of the system, but it has been tested with numerous other um, accessible devices for people with disabilities. Okay, with with, um, with that, Linda, I guess I'm gonna once again thank you for the opportunity to um, help um, educate here tonight and answer any questions that, that anybody has. Uh, we're always available if you have any further questions or any other uh, additional needs for demonstrations. We'd be happy to support that uh, whenever it's convenient for you all. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a thank good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.